Hey guys, it's Monday. What I like about Mondays is it's often pen mail days because stuff that got shipped last week goes to the mail system and shows up today. So today was huge. Believe me, it was huge. Big pen, pen mail day for me today. So I wanted to share with you some stuff, but let's go back a little bit. So I'm going to share with you stuff I got since the last video I did on pen mail. And I don't have much on that to show you. So I only have like two things to cover. And yes, I got pink ink all over my hands and I'll tell you more about that here in just a little bit uh, but uh, one of the things that I want to thank I want to thank um, I want to thank Bob from spearbob.com I met Bob um, at the Raleigh Pen Show well we didn't talk much but I got a chance to meet him and I have bought from Bob several times in the past and he's a, a big seller on on eBay for uh, all things pens and uh, you know, he and I communicated some. I had found I, uh, some stuff I wanted to order, and that's going to show you first of some of the things I had ordered. But I also had communicated with him about some pens that I kind of liked and some so supplies. So I'm going to go back to a Schaefer Cadet that I've had for quite a while. This particular Schaefer Cadet is not one I bought from Bob, but I did buy one of these from Bob to go in my Schaefer Cadet, which kind of leads into my story. So I had the Schaefer Cadet that I bought some time ago, and it's got the touchdown filling system, uh, much like a snorkel. And uh, it was a really nice pen, it was in good condition, but it had one problem. It wouldn't write. And the reason it wouldn't write is this. This is the nib that came out of it. Um, and it's uh, one of the things I like about it. If you like Esther Brooks, if you like modular um, nibs, if you want to change nibs, you can just pull the sucker out uh, and you can put a new one in. So I didn't really know where to buy new nibs and I found on Spear Bob's website uh, where he was selling these replacement nibs. And you can't really see it. I'll try to get you a close up picture of it. But one of the tines is actually kind of, if, if the tines are, are straight like this, I got one of them that's like, eh like that and it came that way when I got the pen and I hadn't been able to use it since and I d decided I'm not gonna try to, to work on it so um, I bought that off from Bob and uh, so it's now in my Schaefer Cadet and it works great so I'm real happy plus I got to pick out what nib I wanted it had a fine while well, I was able to pick out a medium nib which I much prefer so another purchase that I got from Bob um, and this is some pen mail since the last video I did, is I got a Bexley. Now, this is a vintage Bexley. So it's not one that they manufacture under the Bexley name now. This is something that was manufactured for Bexley. So it's kind of a vintage Bexley, if you will, that was manufactured in Japan for them and by an undisclosed manufacturer. So it's all metal. Uh, it's a fairly slender pen. This is probably from the 1990s, is my understanding. And uh, so I got a nice medium uh, nib, nice writing pen uh, from Bexley. And I got that from Spear Bob. So um, I was communicating with Bob. And he also, uh, when he sent me this, uh, he knew of Matthew. He knew of my videos. Uh, and he had sent a couple of uh, children's pens, which I, I don't have here uh, on my desk. Uh, but he sent a couple small pens for Matthew for kids, so I thought that was very nice. Well, I had been over Bob's website an awful lot, all of his listings on eBay, and I actually had said, you know, you've got several that kind of interest me. And he said, well, let me know uh, what you like. So we worked together, and I bought a bunch of pens. I'm going to throw up this video, or not this video, but this picture, and uh, here was my pen mail for today. So I'm going to throw this one in here, though, because it's not from Bob. Just to get it out of the way, I did buy a, a Jin Hao, and I think this is like a 165 uh, or 156. It is a 156, a Jin Hao 156. So this I had ordered like a long time ago from China, and it showed up. So just want to get that one out of the way. Uh, fairly nice looking Jin Hao that kind of looks like one of the better Bowers that are out there. So that out of the way. Everything else that you're going to see in that picture is what I got from Bob. So I've got a list here, and I have to look at the list. So let's start with uh, Pilot. I bought a, like four different Pilot pens from Bob. So I have not inked most of these up. Here it is. This is the Pilot Noble. So this is new old stock, and it is black, and it's got gold pinstripes on it. You can see that clip on that thing, and there's the name right there on it. Pilot Noble. Uh, let's see. Black with gold pinstripes, fine nib, new old stock is how it was listed. So I have not inked it up, but it does have a 
uh, that's what its nib looks like and I'll eventually um, ink these up and uh, work with them but that was the first pilot out of the list the next one I'll get to the more pilots I, I got these just in the order in which I generated the list Lord Baltimore a uh, green and nickel lever filler fountain pen 1950s with a medium nib that's this one right here it's a Lord Baltimore I'm not familiar with the brand now here's my philosophy you know, a lot of people here uh, just recently were uh, getting the Stipula Passaporto because they just come out. And I had my eye on them too. And I got the same, uh, hey, it's in stock now, email if you want to buy it. And uh, I had a debate. Do I want to go that route even though I wanted one? Um, or do I put that money towards something like this where I got 12 or 13 pens um, instead of uh, the one stipula and so I set that aside uh, and I kind of like a variety when it comes to pens I kind of like stuff you don't find all the time I don't like just new pens I like vintage as well and I like some of the vintage ones that you don't often find because number one you can get them usually at a good price number two it just may surprise you that you find some good quality from the 1940s from a no-name brand or maybe that wasn't quite as popular but still did quality stuff they just didn't survive as a company uh, or as a brand name and they changed names or something so that's where a lot of these come from so uh, this here is a Lord Baltimore and it says that right here on the clip Lord Baltimore there and you can see the nickel trim it is a lever filler all of these should have new sacks in them at least they were advertised as such so um, you know it's got a nice medium nib on it I have not inked this up yet I've only inked up two of these pens that I'm showing you. Well, the Bexley I inked up, and then the, and the Schaefer, that had been inked up. But as far as ones that arrived today, I only did two of them, one of which you can tell what color I put in it. You'll probably be able to tell which pen it was, too, just by looking at the pen when I get to it. So, Cascade. It is a blue and silver lever filler, uh, stainless steel, uh, 1950s medium nib. So, it says right here on the clip, Cascade, the brand right on the clip. It's a fairly nice looking blue uh, with all that silver trim on it. And uh, this one here is a twist to pull, not a long twist to get off. But, uh, you can see, that's uh, that's nice nib there. So it's a fairly light pen. We'll see how that uh, inks up. It's only, I mean, it's a real quick, just like boop, and it's capped. So I kind of like the looks of this one. I really like the looks of that online. So I'll give that one here um, a shot probably soon. Let's see, a wherever, green and gold. It's also a lever filler. Um, it is from the 1950s as well. So that would be this one right here. A nice old wherever. I've had some decent pens from wherever and I've had some that really need some repair, some button fillers that uh, were um, horrendously abused over the years that need a lot of work but nice lever filler so and some of these don't have um, in the descriptions uh, the nib or if they had more information I didn't harvest all that info so but I'll see how that one writes uh, as well um, my pen of the day today is this one right here I picked up a Parker 45 a flighter 45. It's an aerometric filler and it's all in stainless steel. When it came to me uh, in an old box, so it had the original box and went with it, just a plain white box with a Parker logo on it, and it had an old Parker plastic box, and it actually came in this right here. So at least it came with the original uh, packaging material, but the Parker Flighter. I have already inked this one up, and since uh, I inked this one up because I was kind of more curious about it, uh, this is my pen of the day today, and I put in a Pilot of Roshizuku Konpeki into this thing. It's a slip top, and that's what the nib looks like. And it actually uh, has got a medium nib, and it writes fairly nicely, uh, and it is one of those squeeze aerometric uh, converters that's inside. So my flighter, my Parker flighter. 45 um, and I've seen other people offer that I got a decent deal on this one no doubt because I've seen what they go for from other sellers um, even across the pond and I was happy with the price I got on that one here's one 
you can tell where I got my pink ink on my fingers. Uh, this is one I'm not familiar with. I had never heard of the brand Piper, P-I-P-E-R. It was brand new. It came in a box. Oh, the box doesn't like to stick together all the time, but there we go. There's its box, Piper. Open it up. He threw in a cartridge uh, uh, to go with it. Uh, just a nice little bed, nothing special to it. Um, not a very expensive pen. It was under it was $30 or so in that ballpark. And you can see that pink and green. Obviously, I did not buy this one with me in mind, uh, but I bought that one for my lovely bride, and I've already given it to her. I just told her, let me give it to you after this. Now, this is not the original nib that came in it. Um, if you watch my last video that I did in a review of uh, my Wancher pen, it came with an IPG, or Iridium Point Germany nib, and I didn't like it, so I replaced it in that Wancher. It was like a repeat performance here as well. So, this also had a horrendously, uh, it was a very fine and, and scratchy nib, and I said, you know, I'm not going to bother uh, trying to fix it, I'll just pull it out and I'll put in another nib. As a matter of fact, another Knox nib. I had another spare Knox nib, the exact same nib I put into that launcher. Um, I also put into this right here, and now it writes beautifully. And I put in for ink some Noodler's Hellfire, uh, which is a pink ink, and it's actually a very nice uh, saturated ink. Uh, girls tend to like it. My wife, my mother-in-law, they tend to like it. And the downside is when you have to replace a nib and you've already inked it up and you write where they go, ooh, that's nasty. Um, all right, I got a spare nib here. Uh, I got, in fact, I got another Knox nib, and I got some Bulo nibs, some Jinhao nibs, and a few others. Uh, I decided now, let's go ahead and put in that nice Knox nib. And in doing so, uh, you know, when you pull out the feed that has just been recently inked, uh, you're going to get uh, ink all over your fingers. So anyway, that is the the Piper. And matter of fact, it was called the Empire Heart of Spring in pink. So um, had a medium nib even though it wrote more like a fine point and wrote very scratchy with that IPG, I went ahead and put in that uh, new nib. Let's go back to um, Pilot. Pilot Duet. Another very thin part uh, uh, pen. This, these have got to be from like the 1970s because that's, that's very much the 1970s era look. And this is a new old stock pen. It's got a fine nib on it. I like the black and gold. I had my choice of a couple different colors on some of these pens, and I picked the, the plain, you know, black with gold trim. So it's another slender pen. We'll see how this one writes. Um, so another Pilot. Uh, let's see, the Pilot Duet. Packard is another pen brand that I'm not really all that familiar with, but it is a vintage pen. So I went ahead and got this. Now this is a pretty. It's got it's it's a burgundy uh, marbled. Uh, acrylic or, or maybe it's celluloid because it is an older pen as a matter of fact this is probably from the 1930s so it's a very vintage pen so um, it is not however um, a lever filler this one is a button filler and you take off the blind cap at the end and there you go supposedly this one is in good working order or at least so I had read on the description so that's probably going to be the next one that I ink up, is this one. So it looks to be really nice condition. And I like the celluloid. I like uh, that marbled look on it. And, you know, I've never used a Packard before. So we'll see how it does. Well, let's see. Oh, let's go back to Pilot. A Pilot 3A, Model 3A. And this is a coral color. This is another one of those new old stock uh, pens that I managed to pick up. Still got the sticker on it. And uh, the top just kind of pulls off, and you can see what that nib looks like. It's kind of interesting, and we'll see how that one uh, writes as well. So, um, obviously, I'm not going through these uh, and taking a long time, but another Pilot, a Pilot Crystal. And it's a, a full demonstrator pen. This was brand new. It's kind of a hard pull to get it off, uh, but it's got an aerometric filler in there. But it is the Crystal and probably so called because look at it it's crystal clear alrighty uh, what else oh a uh, universal um, brand fountain pen it says um, universal right there on the uh, on the clip this one is one of those I thought was really neat Seagram's 
it is a Canadian whiskey. Well, it is a branded pen uh, for marketing. Seagram's VO, Canadian whiskey. So, I've got a, a nice fountain pen, kind of a semi-hooded nib, right there. And uh, let's see, Aerometric Filler from the 1950s is how this one was branded uh, when it was sold to me. And that's what the uh, Aerometric Filler, and it seems to have a good sack in it. Um, it's pliable, and I think it's a fairly new sack. Uh, it's probably a brand new one that was put in. So just a slip cap on that for the 1950s. I thought that had a lot of character to it. And last but not least, I got a Comet. A Comet fountain pen. Never had a Comet either. And so when I saw these, none of these are real expensive pens. I mean, when I'm buying a dozen of them, yeah, I'm not going to pay a lot of money for these. Uh, but I wanted variety. So when I saw these and when I totaled it up, I was like, okay, a little more than I wanted to spend, but let's do it. And just because I can um, because I had the ability to do it, I got a nice looking Comet uh, fountain pen. I do believe that this is also a 1950s Aerometric. And look at that, it's got a clear section to it. So you got the nib that sits down in that, and it's got a clear section, which is pretty cool. Um, and then you screw that off, and then you've got another one of those uh, Aerometric fillers there. So. That is pen mail. So I got 12 pens from Spear Bob today in the mail. I got one from him uh, last week, uh, towards the middle of last week. Um, and I got a new nib from him for my Schaefer. Spear Bob's website, spearbob.com. I'll put that up here on the screen. And if you contact Bob, tell him you heard about him from me. Um, at least that lets him know that people are watching and uh, you know uh, Bob's a good guy to deal with straight up guy and I've had good experiences from buying from him which is why I gave him repeat business and uh, you know multiple hundreds of dollars just within the last several weeks so anyway that is pen mail for today a little bit long video I know but you know look I had look at all the pens that I had to share so talk to you later bye